Today we're going to look at igniting minds, embracing hearts, and peaking curiosity. Interesting topic, right? Now I want you to imagine something with me. Imagine you're a 15 year old woman. As you're starting your self discovery, you're diagnosed with lupus. Now this is a chronic autoimmune autoimmune disease. It cannot be. It can be treated, but it cannot be cured. Now your carefree teenage life just changed radically. Now what? What limitations are you going to face? What career choices are going to be eliminated? And how are you going to live a full and healthy life? Well, my guest, April Chavez, decided that she was not going to allow lupus to control her life, her career, or her health. She studied how thoughts, feelings, patterns of events, and emotions associated with disease flare-up profoundly impact health. All right, let's meet her. April's a very captivating public speaker, as you're going to find out. She's a former police officer. Imagine that, having lupus. Mother of three miracle children, daughters, the miracle daughters. She's a symbol of res resilience and an advocate for comprehensive wellness. And her program encompasses spiritual, the intellectual, and the physical aspects. Along with her husband, she has now founded Driven Living LLC. April, welcome to Life All Community Events. Frank, thank you so much for having me. That was a beautiful introduction. Well, thank you. Thanks for being here. Uh, April and I have spoken a couple of times. And uh, as I kept hearing her story, I said, this is someone that the world needs to know and meet. <laughs> so your thank journey. You with lupus led you on this quest you're going to find this holistic wellness and focusing on the mm -hmm. spiritual intellectual and the physical parts right now how has this experience led you from a police officer which when you told me that i said really you were a police officer and how it influenced this driven living approach that you have now mm. well that's a long story let's start going back a little bit too, because you mentioned in the intro that yes, I was diagnosed with systemic lupus at the age of 15. Mm -hmm. And I had had symptoms since birth. So there were many, many years of going to children's hospital, not really living that average childhood life, not being able to perform in sports when I wanted to because of physical ailments. And it wasn't discovered until 15 when they 15. did more extensive blood work. And so at, at that point, it was kind of nice to be like, all right, at least we know right. what. And there's there's a sense of relief in that. But I think what makes me a little bit more unique is because I was a child having an autoimmune disease, I pictured the world a little differently. And I say that because uh, when I was a teenager, my my mom put me in a in a support group for lupus, and I felt so uncomfortable, Frank, because I was the only kid in there, and so I, I felt like not like I fit in there. Right. Like it wasn't really my place, even though we shared something that was the same. But I I didn't want to utilize uh, that diagnosis as an excuse or as you know, this is an end all. And my, because I was a kid, I wanted my life, I wanted to live it fulfilled. I wanted to be like the other kids. And so I never wanted my disease to define me. Mm -hmm. And I think that that really led me into career fields such as law enforcement, male dominant fields, where I always wanted to prove to myself in the world that it didn't define me, that I was stronger than that. And so it very much propelled me along with some other things. You know, I grew up uh, during the Columbine era in Colorado, so school shootings. Mm -hmm. I had a girlfriend who uh, was robbed in Denver and was shot. And so there was a lot of things that added up to that decision. I was very interested in forensic science in high school. And, um, you know, when I was uh, 18, I was told I couldn't have children. And I became pregnant because at 18, I was sexually active. And I was like, well, why am I taking this birth control? Right. <laughs> so exactly. I, I stopped taking birth control, which wasn't really 
doing me any favors either. Back then there was a lot more side effects and I became pregnant. So that really changed the course of my life. And so when you say three miracle children, that's kind of where it stems from because I, I've really branched outside of what was said was supposed to be my life or, uh, you know, statistically so. And so I have three very healthy, beautiful daughters Wonderful. and uh, I became a mother really young. And that really set the stage for me learning more about taking care of myself because I didn't want to be the mom on the couch where my girls were taking care of me. I did not want to go there. So I really started researching diet, exercise, what you put in on and around your body, those sort of things. Like, how do I live the best lifestyle where I'm healthy enough to take care of my children? And so that really started it. So um, overall wellness has always been at the forefront because of that. Right. So that's a, really, that's a really good foundation of where and why I show up in the world today is because, again, it's always been at the forefront. It's amazing. The, 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 you can never underestimate the power of the human spirit. There's so many people that I've run into, including my brother, who were told you might live five more years. And 40 years later, he's still thriving. And now you're still thriving. Yeah. And it's simply, you're not going to win. Okay. That's right. just the mindset. It I love your mindset. philosophy. My, I love you. My, Go ahead. Mom was, my mom was told also when I was real young that I wouldn't make it to C30. But she chose not to tell me that. So I, I wanted to go back to that mindset thing because I think that's an important piece. She did not tell me that until... I had a few years after I turned 30 um, and I was fairly healthy at that point. So mm -hmm. it's been an ebb and flow with the disease too. And so we'll get more into that because I started realizing that there's definitely some, some times that where I'm really sick and where I'm not. It's uh, it's it, it, because it can't be cured. It's something that now you have to alter your lifestyle from what it might have been to what it needs to be at this point going forward. And that's a tremendous example for your children, I'm sure. And then it's also something that's launched into this, uh, the consulting and coaching that you're doing. So the philosophy again is spiritual, intellectual and physical. Okay, yeah. how do you maintain that balance as you go into this coaching world? Well, lifestyle is a constant thing. It's just like when you are a, life learner. It's life learner, right? And so we are always needing to maintain that and consistently pursue being a little bit better. And SIP Life Slowly is really um, part of that acronym. It's just given a little bit of a, a term there. Mm -hmm. And I, I tell people that it's it starts with S. It is SIP. Um, instead of the other way around, because no one wants to piss on themselves, Frank. And <laughs> yep. so it's very intentional. <laughs> uh, we wanted to go that direction. And I, and I question that too, because wellness is under this massive umbrella, right? And right. if anybody yeah. knows in the, the, the wellness arena, it is not easy to really hone those in. And we have like either the five uh, buckets or the seven buckets, the wheelhouse of what we consider overall right. wellness and, and being able to condense that or put acronyms behind it, what makes it easiest. And so I wanted to make it a little more simple. And I feel very deeply that it always starts with spiritual because there was a point where I questioned, like, do I have it in order? Is it the right way? Uh, you know, shouldn't physical aspects and presenting that in life first uh, take priority? But it's not. That's according to what I have found and what science is coming up with more and more and more. But that spiritual piece of us is key. I mean, we are energetic beings. We are spiritual beings. And so that is really where it comes to. And I mentioned a little bit earlier that we'd get into uh, where I was starting to see similarities that were happening uh, in my life, the times when I became really sick, 
it was always after major events, major stressors. And you've heard oftentimes stress is the number one killer, right? Yes. And stress is tied to emotion. And you can go deeper and deeper into that, uh, into the science behind that. But it all comes back to those reoccurring thoughts, emotions, and beliefs. And so when I started seeing this pattern in life, I noticed that that it is the thoughts and the beliefs that are really, you know, making me unwell and causing the dis-ease. I, I understand exactly what you said. I was a medic in the military many, many years ago, and we would see that quite a bit was mm. stress-induced. Anytime there's a big inspection coming up where you get people coming in with depression or people coming in or they, or they got physically ill um when you're in a war zone there's a lot of that that goes on and it, as in in talking about the spiritual is really important because some people say well that's just a woo woo stuff but it's not it's no. not it's out there and it's and and i think that's where the mindset comes from it's it's i am not going to allow this to happen i believe i deserve better and i'm going to pursue that is that about right yes i i mean we are we are so much more than anyone could imagine. I mean, it's it's very it's difficult to conceptualize that because we're put into this physical form, mm -hmm. and and the way that we have been conditioned so, and because the body is a robot controlled by the mind, you know, so we have those reoccurring thoughts. Um, it's we don't see it, but yes, because we're this immaculate being. Um, yeah, absolutely. We are worthy. We're beautiful. We are love. And source is love. And so if we are a part of that, then that's what we are. And so so coming to that understanding is kind of the first step, right? It's it's acknowledging that, it's having an understanding of that, but then how do you tap into that and how do you reach that? So that's where the the work comes in right to really start to um quiet yourself and go within and that is that is not easy to do we live in a very fast paced world um i first learned a lot of stuff with with law enforcement and you talked about you know the front lines and being on the battlefield etc you see so much and and having to maintain yourself in all that is is not easy and so that's where a lot of trauma comes in. And um, if you can't, you know, get a handle on that, it can be very, very damaging as many know. And so something that there was a couple things that I that I learned that were well, a lot of things that I learned, but two that come to mind uh, with law enforcement was that um, I started seeing and noticing that that people would would continue on that cycle of of violence, let's say, yes. right? And we had a lot of domestic violence cases, many, many, and so you would offer assistance and resources, and they would just continue to go back to the same old situation. But that is just an idea of um, how we are as human beings. We we go back to what's familiar, even if it's not good for us. Um, I also learned breath work. That was the first time that I started learning about calming down our system, because when you're responding and, and you're responding to something that's extraordinarily intense, uh, you know, a hostile situation or you're holding someone at gunpoint, you have to be able to calm yourself down enough in order to um, handle any weapons or any situation to protect yourself and others. And so, you, you know, because our when we're in a high stress, uh, our motor skills are not functioning the way that they should. Mm -hmm. So breath work really, uh, that began. And when I started realizing that that is something that we can do to calm ourselves down, that's just a piece of it. It's a tool that we can utilize. Meditation came way later. And right. when you talked about woo woo, Frank, I mean, yeah, that's a that's a thing that people have in their head, and especially me in law enforcement at the time. I yes, I I knew that there's that spiritual piece to us, but I didn't really dive into it because I wanted to be grounded. 
you know, I, I wanted to stay in this realistic field because I felt that that was safe and that was what was going to, you know, I, I didn't want to go into some weird stuff, Right. <laughs> what you consider weird, right? right. Um, and so I didn't learn until much later on that these things are very, very beneficial. And so uh, meditation is really one of the key things that I have learned to start calming down and going within and stopping that monkey mind a lot of people will state. That's so true. I was a, a, a mentor with the Veterans Treatment Court, which is a veteran who's committed a crime, but it's not a heinous crime. Right? Usually it's something stupid, drunk driving or something like that. Mm. But there was so much PTSD, so much, particularly the last 20 some years since all the desert storm and all that nonsense because if you were in the military odds are you were in the war zone and I started to, to as I was going through this you start learning there's these triggers that and, and it doesn't have to be a gunshot or a, a, it, it could be a smell it could be a sound it could be yeah. anything and then being able to identify the trigger and then cope with it how did you do that Oh, gosh. Well, Frank, I still am doing it. <laughs> Again, this is, uh, I think, too, I, I really want to be clear that it is a constant practice. And I think that that's something that sets people back or holds people back because they think it's so unobtainable or they feel like you do it a few times and then you're supposed to be OK. Right. Well, None of us are okay. <laughs> we have to just keep doing our best and keep learning and growing. And that's really what I, I like to project into the world is that it is this continuous journey of evolving into something greater. And so some of the things that um, I think a lot of it is is knowledge and learning and understanding. Dr. Joe Dispenza was a, was a huge, is a huge influence in my life. I also really, really love the work that the Heart Math Institute is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also, they are also involved in the Global Consciousness uh, Project 2.0, which mm -hmm. is something that people can look into and research, but this is where all the science comes into the play. And that's where me saying, oh, woo woo, and then coming to the idea of the actual knowing because it's being proven scientifically. It's a really, really cool thing. But the big proof, Frank, is when we feel it. It's not just seeing that this is scientific evidence. I mean, yes, that's part of it. And we start to, to you know, be like, okay, I'm open to this. I want to know more. But it's when you start doing the work and you feel it and you can feel the energy. I mean, the, one of the most simplistic ways of showing that is when you ask people to rub their hands for a little while and then you, you know, hold them this way apart and you can feel the energy. But so that's a really, really easy way of explaining just how much frequencies we, we have coming off of ourselves. And those frequencies have information and all of that is emotion. And so... So, so much of that is where I have an idea and an understanding, and that's what helps me the most because I go back when I have those reoccurring thoughts and I start to feel bad or I start to feel, uh, you know, you know, panicky or anxiety, then I, I know what's happening to my body. And I think that that is really a, a key thing. And, and that was what helped me in law enforcement too, when I'm, you know, doing a felony stop on my own. And I I have an understanding of what is happening to my body. And so then I know how to hone it back in. I know what steps I need to take in order to calm it down. And so I think that the understanding um, and the awareness of it is, is really important to know what's happening to you, to know that it's normal, to know that it's okay. Um, you know, anxiety is a big thing. People get anxiety attacks and things are happening to their body and they're freaking out and they think they're having a heart attack or what have you. But, you know, when we understand that it's just our body responding to really stressful thoughts or what have you, and we can actually calm ourselves down to just sit with ourselves and breathe deeply, 
you know, it's pretty amazing the things that can happen. Our bodies are incredibly powerful. Yeah, they are. I interviewed Donna Eden, who's in a lot of the energy um, studies, and she had said that it's three. She said it was three prongs. It's your brain, your mind, the spirit. Mm -hmm. It's your heart. Yes. And then it's your physical being. Yeah. And the three of them have to align. Yeah. And when you get those in alignment, so you physically, you could be physically fit, but your head could be, oh, I can't do this. I'm not good enough or whatever that happens to be. And then it's it's harnessing that, correct? Well, that's why spirituality comes first. Right. <laughs> exactly. Why that's, and and absolutely. And, and I really invite people to look into the Heart Math Institute because they are the ones that have done such extensive research on the coherence of the brain and heart. And it's when you go into that coherent state um, that, that you're, you're creating a totally new you, mm -hmm. really. I mean, you, so, and another thing is, um, is that you know, people, people might think that this is not something that's obtainable or it's too difficult or it's not true. Mm -hmm. But if you think of it as um, how powerful our thoughts are, I liken it to, and I hope that I could say this, but this is one of the easiest ways for, for me to explain it. Because um, when we have a sexual thought, just think of how fast that switches a body, right? Just mm -hmm. one little thought. And that that changes what we do, how we think, how we feel. And that's what I liken it to. That's how powerful our thoughts are. And because change is the only constant, we can change ourselves just that rapidly by by doing a little bit of work or you know, concentrating on our heart center and going into a loving and compassionate uh, feeling. It just it just changes the trajectory of everything. I love that. We had uh, some people who who were dealing in, in uh, dealing with bias, and they would talk about taking a deep breath, reflect, redirect, and respond. Don't react. Mm. A knee jerk reaction usually doesn't turn out too well. Is that what you found? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. knee-jerk reaction does not turn out well <laughs> no um I am really really grateful for my experience in leadership positions because uh I certainly had a temperament and an attitude when I was younger and you know when when you feel like life is happening to you and and it feels so wrong and unfair you know our our easy human reaction is to lash out, to be right. angry, to blame, to to slam cupboards or whatever, right? To be so upset, and that's easy to do. That is a very quick reaction, uh, and it's 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 more difficult to take control of yourself. And when I was put into professional positions, like you can't have any of that. Like that's not acceptable. So, you know, I think that that, is, that really was a great starting point for me. And, and I went into leadership positions so rapidly. I mean, I started in the academy as a squad leader, uh, just like that. And, and well, and having kids early on, I mean, that certainly helps, you know, where you yes. have to be a better person, a better version of yourself in order to, you know, protect others. Uh, and so... I think that, um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> no, that was good. That was good. Now, as you as you bring people, you do, you do a lot of coaching with people. And as they come in, what, what's, the, what's the first thing you say to them as, as they come into your program? Mm. Well, the first thing I say is hello, Frank. That's a good one. That's a good start. <laughs> Welcome. And I, I would say I always make sure it's a good fit. And so I, I don't take just anybody right off the bat. We have a, a time together to, to see if it's a good fit because people have to desire the change greatly enough. And a mm -hmm. lot of 
people, especially coaches, know that, that it is not fair to somebody or to themselves to work with somebody who really doesn't believe enough in themselves and uh, doesn't believe that change can happen. And so that's the first and, and foremost. It's a, it's a discussion about, is this going to be a good fit? This is how I work. Does that sound good to you? Is this something that is in alignment with you? Because I work with people with uh, hypnotherapy. So my performance coaching has a lot of that calming down the system going within because I know that that's where some of the greatest and quickest work can be done is by really changing yourself neurologically and making things really sticky. And so that's why I have a conversation with someone first to make sure that that is something that they're open to. Exactly. There has to be a why. Why do you want to do this? Yeah. Right. And sometimes you hear, well, because my boss said I have to clean up my act. Okay. Well, not a good reason. <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. What's your reason? And, and nothing's yeah. going to change until you choose to change. A hundred percent. And it has to be for you. You know, you have to desire the change because it's, it's for you. It's that, it's that self love, self compassion, self care. It's about desiring to improve yourself. Mm -hmm. And you got to start there. Uh, one thing, uh, one of the fitness people, fitness and health people I said, uh, interviewed said, Frank, self care is the best health care, period. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. you have to do something. You can't just rely on just take this pill and you'll be better. It doesn't work. Well, it's temporary. Exactly. Yeah. Learning long-term habits is really probably the best route. <laughs> right. And it doesn't happen overnight. It takes a great deal of energy. You, uh, I used to have your business going, you have business. And so you're an entrepreneur and this is filled with all kinds of challenges, as we all know, and rewards. And it's not for the faint of heart, obviously, because some days you get up and it's like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Now, you started this business organically, right? You had limited funds, but you had this great intuition and faith and you were willing to work hard. What would you share with other people who want to get into this world? Uh, any, any experiences that you had that would benefit them? Oh, so many. Uh, entrepreneurship. You're correct. It's not for the faint at heart. And I have a fantasy, Frank, that more and more people are going to step into it. Yep. And it is scary. And it is also so exciting. And I think that really when you when you switch the mindset of this is exciting and this is an adventure, um, and also knowing that you are going to fall down over and over and over and over again. And as long as you keep getting back up, I think Rocky, uh, one of the Rocky movies said that. So life is going to going to kick you down. It'll keep you down there if you let it. And so as long as you keep getting back up, you know, so it's it's a lot of that, because when you when you step into uh, this position, it is all you. This is your baby. You no longer have the safety net of, of corporate or whatever career field that you're leaving. Um, you know, so you no longer have people that are taking care of the finances. You are no longer have people that are backing you with health and medical and, you know, all of the things, right? Training, everything is now on you. And especially for us, we did go into it completely organically. We didn't go into it with a team. Our team consists of two and a half. And the half is a cat. And because she doesn't have thumbs, she's not very helpful. So, but she, she's certainly there as there for us um, when, we, when we need a loving purr and all of those awesome frequencies that come from that purr. There's a lot of health benefits there, but we can talk about that another time. Right. So um, it's, it is, you have to have that passion, the drive and consistency is super, super key. Of course, many people hear that. I have a lot of people ask, what are you doing? How are you doing it? And um, it's, it's a lot of determination. I mean, the, the driven living and the wellness driven life show 
that driven is really part of the 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 key player. It's right. it's having a drive, a desire, a passion, a goal. It's knowing that your business is a reflection of you. Your branding is you. And when you hone in on your values, being able to put those values out and into every single thing that you do, every post that you do, every marketing that you do, every action that you do should be in alignment with who you are, because that's what it is. It's your baby. And so having an understanding of, yes, it's going to be challenging. Yes, you're, you're putting yourself in the most vulnerable position that you ever have. And because, because it is you and, and you're putting yourself out there, it's like stepping out on a stage and public speaking is one of the greatest fears that we have as human beings, right? We could go into the history and the biological aspects of why that is, but that this is what it is. It's like stepping out on a stage and presenting yourself to the entire world. But now, Frank, that's why I have this fantasy that more people are going to be doing it because I believe that when we're all going into our passions, when we are all being in the creative state is how we start to evolve. And my part of our, our mission and the idea of what we want to bring to the world is helping evolve humanity. And I believe that that's a very great piece of it. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that is a big deal. When uh, what I was, I've seen in, in, the, in the COVID world is so many people are doing exactly what you said. I am happy. I didn't appreciate the life that I had an hour commute each way, 10 hours at work, yeah. and I was not happy. So I'm going to try and make myself happy, right? Now, when you leave the corporate sector, like in my case, I had like hundreds of people. And I would say, here, handle this. And then you're on your own and you say, handle this, and there's nobody there. So now it's you. As yep. you said, you have to do it. And one of the things I was told years ago was the first thing you're going to face whenever you make a decision or you make a, a life-altering thing, first thing you're going to run into is fear and doubt. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, how are you going to handle it? Yeah. Uh, that That is something that took a very, very long time and I continue to work on. But I knew... When I started this, if I continue to take things so personally, I'm a very emotional person, very. Mm -hmm. And 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 I, I say that vulnerably, authentically, and it's easy for me to revert back to feeling uh, like I'm taken advantage of or I, I've taken things personally. But um, Four Agreements is a book that has to be read often. And yes. so... <laughs> refresh but i i had to do a lot of work with myself before i went into this and i learned a lot of heavy lessons with family friends and family the the people that are closest to you that don't end up supporting you and uh you know i i kind of wore a little bit of an entrepreneur hat bits and pieces weaved throughout life Mm -hmm. And so I think I've always kind of had the spirit of it. And there was something that I was really um, compassion or sorry, uh, really interested in doing when I was a uh, number of years ago. And my brother said something to me that was so hurtful that I stopped doing business for two years, Yikes. two years, because I allowed what he said to me to, and I took it to heart. I, I was like, you know, you're right. This is crazy. I should be doing this. And, and that is so far from the truth. And that's easy for us to, to go into that place, that self-doubt, because we are harder on ourselves than anyone could ever possibly be. Exactly. And so because you're the worst, you're your own worst enemy, you know, having the understanding of that in order to, to try to be like, I can't listen to this right now. I need to keep going. And so many people, I mean, I've, I've had the pleasure of interviewing a, a couple hundred people now and, and people who are just, uh, you know, they're, they're in the most beautiful places in the world. They're, they're keynote speakers speaking around the globe and they share stories 
about how they had those moments where they didn't think that they were going to continue on because they didn't feel like they were worthy right. or good. You know, they almost stopped writing their book because, you know, they, they felt there was too many out there or they, you know, what, what good is their word, you know, and we come to that because the world is full of people and things, but the, the truth is the world doesn't have you. And because we're all so unique, you bring the light and that's why your business is a reflection of you. And that's why people are going to do business with you because they like you. <laughs> Not everybody's going to. You're going to yep. hear a lot of bad feedback. And I think when you know that too, you expect it. You know, I've had comments on my show that are like really negative. And, and I know that that's going to happen. But you know what I say about that is I'm really glad that I'm getting the comments because guess what? They're watching the show. So they, somebody watched it. There's an yep. opinion. There's a discussion going on. Yep. And then it moves on from there. Well, April, this has been amazing. Uh, I'm so impressed with what you've done and what you're accomplishing. Uh, we're just about out of time. What last words do you want to leave with the word, the audience around the world today? Uh, you are so much more powerful than you ever could imagine. And just shine your light into the world. You're worthy, you're beautiful, and we want to see you. We want to see you up on that stage and sharing your story and your journey to inspire others to take action to also improve themselves. That is so right on point. Uh, everyone is going through something. And when you open up, this is my experience. This is what I dealt with. It's going to impact somebody. You don't know when or you don't know who, mm. but there's somebody else out there experiencing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, how can people reach you, April? Because a number of people are going to want to talk to you. Yes. Well, it's set on my name throughout this. April Chavez, Driven Living. Go to www.drivenliving.com. The talk show is the Wellness Driven Life Show. That's our YouTube. That's our handle for the show is the Wellness Driven Life Show. I invite you to see that. Our website has it all. And when you come to our website, you get a free hug. Free hug, and everybody needs one a of them. Free hug. <laughs> it's <laughs> our our ebook, and so it's it's really it, it's a it's our first book that we created, my husband and I, and the cat, and uh, we it's it's almost kind of like a children's book, sort of, uh, in the beginning, and then there's a lot of a lot of more heavier detail towards the back of it, where there's the science behind it. And it's just another tool to put in your toolbox to utilize when you're under pressure and, and you can give yourself a hug. But the book is really our gift to the world and also um, for signing up for our newsletter, which has a lot of incredible content, a lot of backstories about the guests that we have on the show. So that's how you can reach us. And make sure you make the time to reach out to April. She's, as you've heard, she's an incredible individual. She has done so much for so many. And when you do reach out to her, she responds very, very quickly. So don't hesitate. You get to know this woman. Well, as I said, we're just about out of time. April, I wanna thank you again, showing us that regardless of circumstances, we can have a life that gives us joy and inspires others at the same time. Now you can see this show and my podcast, which is called Life Altering Events, on my YouTube channel, Frank Sakari. It'll be on Parade Deck, and it'll be on my podcast, which I think I already said. I will send links to April, and she'll post them everywhere in her world. If you use the YouTube channel for either one of us, please subscribe. And let me leave you with this. None of us are in this alone, and the secret to walking on water is to know where the rocks are. And today, April showed us where many, many of those rocks are. Join us again next week for another Life Altering event. Again, April, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Frank. Thank you.